Here we are with Aluka on her story for Slice Radio. Thanks for joining us today, Aluka. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're so welcome. Um, so you've got your debut out. It landed earlier in April. So um, it's an amazing album and I imagine it's been a bit of a journey. You've had a couple of singles out before this. So um, first I'd like to touch on um, what led you to this point. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, it always feels like this long and winding road and I know a lot of people are probably just finding me for the first time, but it's, it, it feels like I've been, you know, doing this for a while. I started very young. Um, my I was lucky enough to have a really musical family, particularly my dad, who's also a songwriter and um, now builds guitars and had a little 12 track recording desk um, when I was growing up. So I was able to, to start recording my own songs. I, I think I put my first song down as a seven year old, um, which was really cool. And I, I think it, it, it makes, it's enabled me to feel really comfortable in the studio. It's kind of like my second home being in there, kind of that whole process of creation. Cause it is, it's very different from playing songs live. It's very different from, um, you know, even writing a song in a writing room, like it, being in a studio is, um, is its own thing. And I, I think I've always felt really comfortable and I really love it. I love that process of, of creation and, and hearing your song really come to life. And I think that does come from, um, yeah, starting really young and, and finding a comfort, not a comfort zone, but something like as a, a place of, um, I guess comfort, um, in the studio, which, you know, was, was obviously a big part to do with my dad creating really comfortable, um, just creative space for me to, to flourish. And, and I think just writing so much from that, that stage and, and having someone really encouraging you to, to, to push, to keep pushing in terms of songwriting and music was definitely a huge part of, I think why I'm, yeah, why I'm here and um, the, the sounds on the record definitely come from from that, uh, you know, whether it's the, the records I listened to as a kid and um, which my parents would play me. It's, it's kind of all the whole journey, I guess, has led to, yeah, the, the birth of this album. Oh, great. Um, do you get nervous as well? Does it, did it help with nerves, like going into the um, studio? I guess you would have to have um, high confidence and especially on stage too. Is that something yeah. that you would sort of, it would help with as an artist? Yeah, absolutely. I think it's the more you do it and, again, going back to that, finding I really, because I, I do know a lot of, of musicians who don't like the studio and who find it quite nerve wracking. Um, but I, I guess having started so young in such a, a lovely atmosphere, there was never pressure at a home studio, in a home studio. I mean, it wasn't really a studio. It was just a, a desk set up in like the living room. Um, but it was still, there was never high pressure there. And I think I've, I've carried that through. I, 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 see it more as a creative a creative space um to explore rather than this kind of scary high intensity um space so I think definitely starting and then as well just playing music from when I was quite quite young and um you know starting to play live also when I was quite young it just becomes just a part of who you are and and of course I still get nervous you know I've been doing some some of the biggest shows I've ever done recently um in a with a support tour I'm doing um and so of course there's nerves you know we, yeah. we did a venue the other week which was 10,000 capacity and that's the biggest I've I've played and so of course there's of course there's nerves um with shows like that but I I think I'm lucky in that I was able to, yeah, start start really young and um, never have a really bad experience um, either in the studio or playing live. You know, I've played a lot of not so fun gigs, but I've never had a, a kind of horrible, horrible experience where I got so nervous or anything. So, um, yeah, I've been pretty, pretty lucky. Yeah, lucky. Um, 
that's a that's a fantastic start. So <laughs> you already kicked, ticked a couple of boxes out of the out of the um well first off, um, I guess you could say. So um now doing my research as a good journo does, I found out you're you're from the Blue Mountains and you call our lovely Harbour City Sydney home. Um and do, I guess that helps with the music getting into studios, that sort of thing. Um, but do you also work out of America and um, places like that as well? Yeah, for sure. I think I've spent a lot of time in America over the years. I've kind of gone back and forth a lot and will probably be there more permanently at the end of or kind of mid this year. Um so it's definitely, yeah, always been a bit of a second home to me between LA and Nashville. I, a lot of the songs from the record are written there. Um, I've, yeah, done a lot of writing in, in both those places. I, I think Australia will always be, I don't know, like a, a soul home for me. But I, I think as someone who likes to, to push myself constantly out of my comfort zone and to um, be in constant exploration and, and searching um, in terms of creatively, I, I think it just makes sense for me to want to, you know, go beyond Australia um, and particularly America. I mean, most of the artists that have inspired me um, are all from America and, and, you know, and even the writers and um, they're all, yeah, out of America. So I think it just seems like a, a, place that's always um yeah drawn me in and a place that I'll always go back to uh -huh. and I guess being in LA or could help with career prospects and, Absolutely. and like yeah. That. okay yeah um my cat's just walking in front of my screen hello hello super hands can you just go away sorry um <laughs> Okay, let's hope it goes away. Um, all right, so you finally got your debut out. You've released a couple of singles up until that release. And um, how do you feel finally getting it out? Like just in regards to having a debut. It feels good. I, I think it's so funny. There's so much lead up to an album release. There's so much anticipation and, and then it's just kind of out. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I think it's, it's impossible to, um, yeah, I, I, I guess there's so much lead up that it always feels a, a little bit strange when it's finally out and you're like, Oh, that's, that's it. But, um, I, it's exciting. And I think I'm, I'm really proud of the whole record and I'm really proud of, um, what we were able to do in such a strange time in the world mm -hmm. um, because it was all put together and a lot of it was created during lockdown. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm really proud of it and I, I do feel good. It's I guess I've never had a full body of workout, so I'm still kind of feeling it out and, and seeing how I feel about it. <laughs> well, I think you should be proud because you've. it's evident, I feel, that you've worked really hard on it to be like um, absolutely honest. Um, you've got some wild themes on there. It's um, 10 songs with some complicated areas with, I would say, hope, a central theme. Oh, you're nodding. <laughs> Great. Um, and it's sold as... A uh, messy, strange, turbulent, beautiful trip. Um, if we go deeper, what does um, what sort of journey did you go on recording these little babies of yours? I think, in general, the whole the whole journey of writing, and I have been writing these songs for a few years now. Um, it was kind of my way of trying to figure out my, my place as an artist in the world in such a weird time. Um, 
you know, I, I think a few songs in there definitely dive into this kind of existential dread that I think a lot of us young people are, are experiencing. I mean, top that all off with a, a pandemic. Um, it's, it's definitely a strange time in the world. And I think especially during the last few years, it's, it's been really easy to become quite apathetic and quite numb because it's almost too much, um, too much to deal with. And I think this record is, is my way of trying to kind of break through that numbness and, um, to find the pulse again, to find that vitality and that life and that excitement for, that thirst for life again um, because it was my, that was kind of my journey um, in creating the record coming from, you know, a bit of a, a darker place to, to kind of finding this, this reason to um, create and, and find joy and vibrancy in life. Um, so yeah, it was just kind of my way of, of figuring of figuring it out and I, I hope that in turn it can enable others to not necessarily figure it out because I don't know if we ever do figure things out but um just to feel something whether that's it, that is joy or um maybe a sense of despair or I don't know hope in the end <laughs> but just something something um I think it's it's yeah explores all those those big big feelings mm -hmm. and on the first track the limit you sort of get up on the soapbox with a sort of uh, your view on the music industry and um also the i guess everything that came out in australia about um uh like um I'll let you talk about it. It was the sexual abuse and um, toxicity of um, workplace in Parliament. But how, is that something you aim to do? Sort of advocate as well as this, when with your art. Yeah, I I think the two for me are very inextricably linked. I don't think there's. A kind of separation between the two so I think it um, naturally always flows into what I do um, but yeah that that song in particular um, definitely was it was yeah around the time that 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 stuff was all co coming out about Parliament and a similar reckoning was having was was um, being had in the music industry as well and stuff that you know, you would talk to any woman and, and none of us, I, I don't think, were very surprised by it. Um, but, you know, I, people were, were so horrified by what was going on and it, it's sad what we kind of deem as normal just to survive in an industry that is so male-dominated. Um, but I, I think it's been a really important moment for, for other people to, to recognise just what this industry, what parliament, what generally... Um, let's be real the world the world is like especially in you know male dominated industries um and to yeah i think as as a woman in the industry another important part of it was realizing that this was so many other women shared similar stories to me um which i think is a big part of of a healing process of a um you know, to be able to share stories and realize that this is this is endemic um, in our structural um, foundation as a society, especially again in in these very traditionally male dominated societies. So, yeah, it was personally and um, you know socially, it was it was a really important moment and continues to be. And that that song was was my way of of basically harking back on all the women who've inspired me and who've no doubt had to wade through so much bullshit to get to where they got to. Um, but then the chorus is kind of all about like, we've, we've still got a long way to go. So kind of buckle up um, and keep, keep, keep on doing the thing. Great. I love to hear it. Um, it, it needs to be said. It's, um, ridiculous basically yeah. what um what goes on and the way that 
men can just treat people, especially the case at Sony that was just oh. amazingly awful. <laughs> um, so you were talking about, you touched on it, but how did COVID and lockdown as well, because it was an experience of its own, um, how did that impact um, the recording and sort of the work, like, I guess, the words and the music you were writing? I think it definitely, um, yeah, as I kind of touched on, there was definitely moments of that existential dread which comes across in songs like Willing to Break, um, which for me kind of summed up what was going on because that was at the very start of COVID when um, the BLM protests were happening, you know, in all over the world and there was just this this moment of reckoning in so many different ways and, you know, environmentally our planet. Um, there was just, yeah, a reckoning going on in, in so many different ways. So I think that that song definitely was influenced by that everything that was going on um at that time so i but i i think all songs you know you write i think it was nina simone that said as an artist your your duty is to reflect the time so i think anything i i write was was reflecting the times in in some way and even if it was a, a dancey joyful song like crazy um it was it was still a way of finding joy in this maybe um, really dark and strange time. So I, I think every um, everything I was writing was a response to to the time. And and as a side note, that song um, <laughs> was also my way of kind of poking fun at this um, whole idea of of the media in particular and patriarchy calling women um hysterical and crazy it was kind of my um way of of making fun of that and reclaiming the word <laughs> so that was in itself a, a response to um everything too so yeah i think you're always reflecting the the times you're living in even if it's conscious or not mm -hmm. I, I really adore that quote that you pulled up from Nina Simone. I think that's mm -hmm. that's that um is so true about artists and um how they write. Mm -hmm. And then going back to something else you touched on earlier, you in you're on the road with your mates, Mime Cordial, and you've played in front of ten thousand people. How is that for you? Like, um, I guess you could reclaim crazy. <laughs> <That's> crazy. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. Um, yeah, it's it's been amazing. It it really has been amazing. Support shows are always a funny one because you you don't know how the audience is going to respond to you. You don't know if they're just kind of waiting for the the band they paid to see um, and won't really pay you much attention. But I released a song with the Lime Guys last year, and I think that's really helped me connect to their audience. And um, Louis comes out in my set, and we sing the song together. So it's been really a really beautiful. Um, yeah, the audience has been absolutely amazing singing along to to the words especially in that song um so yeah i couldn't have asked for anything anything better it's been amazing mm. and i guess a great experience as you're um just sort of as you say it's the beginning um and you i would imagine you're just sort of dipping your toe in but getting this amazing chance as well to um I guess, as you say, they're singing along, so there must be fans. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> totally. Um, and then next month you're heading off in June to do three shows at, um, I don't know if you'd agree, but at a um, more intimate um, oh, presentation. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So would you like to tell us where you're going and um, what we can expect from this tour of Queen of the Turbulent Hearts 
finally. (laughs) I know. Um, Yeah, I'm just doing kind of three quite intimate shows, Sydney, Melbourne, Brisbane, um, to, yeah, to celebrate the record and to be able to play play all of the songs in full, um, to be able to tell people a little, little bit more about the songs and how they were um, how they were written and, yeah, just have this really beautiful, intimate um, experience with the fans and obviously with a full band. Um, but, yeah, I think it should be, should be really beautiful. Oh, lovely. You've got to love a beautiful gig. So... Um uh what is next uh, you say um you're writing a bit um what can we expect yeah well i'm after my own shows i'm gonna be heading back to the states um basically to to write and yeah probably be over there a bit more permanently for for the next little while play some shows over there um and yeah, start on, on album number two. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. So you're going to be based in LA? Yeah, yeah. Great. All right. Well, I hope it's an awesome experience. I'm sure they'll lap you up. And then <laughs> you'll be like, oh, Australia, I guess I've got to come back and play it. <laughs> <laughs> Cute little Australia. <laughs> oh, since the to happen like there's artists like Cordy Barnett um I'm just amazed at how big she is in America compared mm. to like she's big in Australia but America just love her and yeah, it's great. <laughs> there's yeah. probably loads of others but she's just the one that I think of now um so I'm just going to wrap up now with and ask you without any notice, I do this to everyone that comes on the show, um, to request a song. You can request anything. Oh, um, so it can be new or old? Yes, or in between. Oh, um... It's funny, this should be so easy. Um, but it's really hard. I mean, oh, my God. Um, I think it's like a comfort song for me that I was just listening to driving back from where I was before. Road to Nowhere by Talking Heads. <laughs> yeah, great. I don't know. I great can never song. get I can never get sick of it. I think it. I think it is a bit of a comfort song. It was like all rainy and overcast, and um, I was just had that on repeat. I'm also someone that annoyingly repeats songs. Like I'll have a day where I just feel like one song, and I'll just have that song on repeat. So that's been my song today. It's not annoying. I'm that person too. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to listen to it now after this because it's in my head. Oh. <laughs> well, thank you. What a lovely <laughs> gift. You're welcome. So, um, well, that's, I, that's all I had. Did you want to mention anything or do a big plug? No, I mean, just that all the... Ticket links for the shows are all mm. online at Aluka Music, Instagram, website, Facebook, YouTube, all the things. Mm-hmm. Well, what are your handles for the Instagram, for Instagram and Facebook? Aluka Music. Uh-huh. Are you on TikTok? I am, yes. Okay, great. <laughs> I expect some insanity. Sanity at its best, craziness even. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Um, Yeah, well, thank you for today. And um, I wish you all the best with everything else you've got going on today. Thank you. Have a wonderful afternoon. Thanks for having me. Oh, you're very welcome.